All right, so unless you've been under a rock, you're aware that Apple is having a huge paradigm shift with their product line right now. They're moving away from Intel to their own silicon chips, and the first chip out is the M1 chip. It's available in three products, the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro. So what I have here is the MacBook Pro. We're going to open it up. And we're going to talk a little bit about what does this mean for you as a creative professional. Should I do the thing? <laughs> All right, here we go. There's that chime. Welcome back, chime. Peel it off. And the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro. All right guys, so I unboxed this yesterday. Today I've had a chance to play around for a little bit, install some apps, and I gotta say I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked. I expected a little bit of an incremental upgrade, but honestly, this thing is like literally, it's blowing my mind. Um, and now of course, just to be very clear, I bought this myself with my own money. It's not sponsored or endorsed by Apple. I don't have to say anything. And in fact, if you look at some of my earlier videos, like 2016 MacBook Pro, I have no problem telling you if something is trash. But this thing is blowing my mind. I can't believe the performance that I'm getting out of this. For example, I wanted to test the video playback. So I knew a good way to test the video playback was to take 4K DJI footage. Not the Canon or the Sony footage, because that stuff plays back pretty good. But the DJI stuff is pretty hard um, to play back smoothly. So I just imported some here into Premiere Pro, launched Premiere for the first time, uh, linked up a piece of footage, 4K footage, and put it into the timeline, full power, playing back like, <laughs> whoa. This thing is playing back smooth as butter without dropping a frame, even, even scrubbing. And this is in Premiere Pro, which has not even been updated yet for silicon. So another thing is because it's running on Apple's silicon, which is the same processor that the iPad is running on and the iPhone, that means that we can run iPad and iPhone apps on here. Now, hold on, don't get too excited. Not every app is gonna work. It could, but it comes down to the manufacturers, you know, the people that make the apps, they get to decide whether or not they want it to work. And I was surprised to see the DJI apps on there. One of them being the Ronin app. So I thought, wonder what happens. Can I control my RS2 uh, gimbal from my laptop? And guess what? Yes, I can. And I can get RavenEye on there. I go to the controls. Uh, you don't have the touch screen, of course, but that's really interesting. So that opens up a lot of worlds. So that opens up some possibilities for you guys with some of the apps uh, that you can run on your desktop now and that can change your workflows. So right now there is a public beta of Photoshop available and I'm gonna do another test on that. Um, it doesn't have all the features, a few features missing, but it works as a universal um, application. So I put it on there just to do a quick test and I was like, well, let's do some AI things. So I use select subject. Oh my gosh, almost instant. So then I went into those neural engines. You know how those, those neural filters, you know how they take forever. Those were exceptionally fast. So I'm seeing a lot of potential here. Like, wow, there's some things we're going to be able to do inside of Photoshop and inside of Lightroom. Once everything gets transferred over, it's going to be so much faster and more efficient than before. Let's talk about the efficiency. So the reason I chose a MacBook Pro over the air is essentially the difference is the fan. So what happens because this chip is now so efficient, it doesn't generate so much heat, which means they were able to completely eliminate the fan inside of the MacBook Air, which seems like, how's that even possible? Well, Apple have been making these chips for the iPads for years. There's never been in a fan. There's never been a fan in the iPad. So they've got really, really good at doing this. So putting into that laptop, means that you get the full performance. Now, what happens when it gets above that thermal th uh, threshold, in other words, it gets above a certain heat uh, where you know it doesn't have a fan to cool it down, what it's gonna have to do is it's gonna slow down the process. From what some of the people have been testing, it takes a lot before it gets to that level. 
Now, if you're working on large files inside of Photoshop or you're encoding video or rendering video, you're gonna need that fan. And so the MacBook Pro here has that fan. So when it gets up to that thermal threshold, that fan kicks in and cools the system rather than having to slow down the process. So if you're doing processes that you might be working on it for extended period of time, that's when you wanna get the MacBook Pro. And I'll be honest with you, the fan has not really been running in this very much. Right now it's not running, it's completely silent. And I've had this running for several hours now and this thing is stone cold. It's cool, it's very, very cool. There's no heat at all on here. So I've done all the tests that I've done so far. I've set this machine up, um, I've installed software, I've been running Premiere Pro, I've been testing Photoshop, I've been doing running benchmarks, all kinds of things on here, and it's still 90% battery, and it's been running for hours. Okay, so the battery claim is real. I don't know, you know what the hours are gonna be, but yes, we're looking at extended battery life in this thing. Another thing that's really nice, and this also comes with the latest, uh, you know, Big Sur, and I know I'm sounding like a fanboy, forgive me guys, like yesterday if I had recorded the same video, which I did, I was nowhere near as enthusiastic because when I tried it, I was like, holy crap, this stuff really is fast. It's not just a claim, because when Apple did, you know, the keynote two times faster, three times faster, seven times faster, 11 times faster, 11 times faster than what? Right, so, you know, it, it's, I can be twice as fast. I am twice as fast. My, actually, I'm 10 times as fast as a snail. So, you know, if you're not saying what you're comparing it against, those arbitrary numbers mean nothing. Um, but I, I kind of, in a way, I understand why they are, because what do you compare it to? Because do you compare it to something of a similar clock speed? Or do you compare it to something of a similar amount of RAM or video RAM? I mean, you really can't, because it's a different architecture. This is like comparing apples to oranges. So, um, you know, apples. <laughs> okay, so there's two types of software. There's software that was built for Intel, which is the stuff you're running on your machine right now. And then there's what's known as universal. So universal will work natively in Intel, and it will also work natively on the M1 chip or the Apple Silicon. So, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for universal applications. So then once they're universal, they're gonna take full advantage of the power and the chipset. Now, the Intel ones mostly work on here uh, through Rosetta 2. Now, if any of you, like I remember going through the Apple, you know, when I went from the Apple chip to Intel, and this is, this is just deja vu. This has all happened before. This is nothing new. So it's gonna kind of help maybe, you know, looking on the experience I've had, can help give you guys advice going forward, which I will, I'll close this video out with buying advice. Um, so the stuff that there, so Rosetta is an emulator. So essentially what happens is the software that is not working natively on the M1 goes through Rosetta, it translates it, and then runs it on your machine um, on the M1 chip or the Apple Silicon, you can run it. Um, so Apple claims that some of them, this chip is so good that some of these applications run even better through Rosetta than they do natively on Intel. I'm not convinced on that, and maybe it's some applications and maybe not others. We'll do tests, we'll find all of that out. But basically, this is what you've got to deal with right now, is do you buy this, and this is the buying advice right now, what, what, what do you buy? So I'm gonna say this is amazing, don't buy it yet, unless you have to. Okay, so here's my question, do you need a new computer in the next two years. If you can wait a year or two years, I would say wait. And for two reasons. One, this is the first edition. This is just the first, they're gonna learn a lot from this first uh, edition here. People like me, I'm basically beta testing this for Apple right now. We all are. Um, you know, when I say beta testing, I'm not an official Apple beta test. I have no affiliation with Apple at all. But, this is, this is the first version, and it's a little 13-inch MacBook Pro. But I've, I've got to say, you know, it's I'm really excited with where it's going. But here's the thing. These chips are going to get better. They're going to develop, and then they're going to go into the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and then they're going to be in iMacs, and they're going to be in iMac Pros, and 
eventually into the Mac Pros. So this is what you got to think about, and this will happen quickly. I'd say within the next year, the lineup is going to be very, very different than today. So if you don't need a computer right now and a 13 inch is not really what you're looking for, I would wait because you're going to get the better hardware. And who knows? Like, I'm, I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe the Mac, you know, they can come with iMacs. They're going to put dual M1 chips in there. Or the M2 chip might be out. Or maybe the iMac Pro is going to have four M1 chips. See, see where I'm going with this? And so right now, the maximum memory you can get is 16 gigs. And it seems like I'm kind of surprised because I'm running 8 gigs right now. And I didn't think I could even run Photoshop or Premiere Pro. So don't think of 8 gigs or 16 gigs like you have in the past. However, I have over 100 gigs of RAM on my Mac Pro. Yeah, I have a 32 gigabyte video card. So obviously that Pro level Mac Pro is going to be more powerful than this. This is not going to beat that. But once they start to build out the Pro line, we're going to be looking at some incredible processing. And now the second thing you need to think about too is the software that you use. The actual real version of Photoshop is coming out next year is what Apple said on their keynote. You know, they have a beta available now, but not all the features are in there. So from what they've announced, the full featured Photoshop will be coming out next year. Lightroom will be around soon enough, Premiere Pro. And so you essentially want to have all of your apps working on the system before you go out and really use it as your production system. This is not gonna be my production computer. This is a testing computer and I've essentially just got it for that, for testing and trying things out, seeing what works, see what doesn't work. And the other thing you've gotta consider is, what are some of those utilities that you are using? You know, some of these utilities are not gonna be compatible. Um, for example, I use Squeeze Studio, that's stopped development. So they're never gonna make a silicon version of it. So if it does work through Rosetta, then that's nice. But if there's bugs, those bugs are not going to be fixed. So there's, 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 think about those little plugins or applications that maybe are not being developed anymore. Those are not going to make it. And eventually Apple's going to remove Rosetta just like they did last time, you know, a number of years ago. Apple's saying it's going to be a two-year transition. Okay, so let's talk about this MacBook Pro. Now, if you're a person that is doing maybe some hobbyist work in Photoshop and you're not like doing heavy Photoshop work and you're doing a lot of word processing, word, web surfing, um, you know, spreadsheets, all that kind of thing. This is a killer machine. This is going to be great. Um, you know, high-end consumer, prosumer. Yeah, you, you're, you're going to be good with this. It's got the nice keys. It doesn't have those horrible keys. Uh, it's got a beautiful screen on it. Um, it's This is a great little computer, this MacBook Pro. I'm really impressed with it. It stays cool. Battery lasts a long time. Um, it's snappy. Uh, one thing I don't like, it's only got two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the side um, when they could have easily put two on each side. So just having two is a little bit of a letdown because if you're running a power in one and then you're running a monitor in the other one, well, you want to plug in a hard drive, what are you going to do? You know, so <laughs> um, of course you can get a hub and I'll do a review on a hub uh, because that's definitely going to be important. All right, guys, so I'm curious. I've got this machine for testing. I'm going to be testing Photoshop. I'm going to be testing Premiere Pro. I'm going to be testing Lightroom. What would you guys like to see me test? What process, or, you know, do you want to see large files or particular filters or workflows? Um, you know, do you want to see how fast this is versus the 16 inch MacBook Pro? Do you want to see how fast it is versus my Mac Pro? Um, I'm curious for that. So guys, let me know in the comments underneath specifically what you would like to see me test. If you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, first of all, welcome. Consider hitting that subscribe button and you're going to get a new video from me every single week. Uh, you're going to get the occasional tech review um, and a lot of tutorials. And by the way, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.